All right, YouTube, we're here with the A ASH uh, 26 here. Been doing some work on the canopy, and we're just kind of waiting on some glue to dry on the bottom of this, all the way around the edges. And uh, once that's totally set up, then I can start moving on to that project, that portion of the project again, which is going to include the latch to retain it, and then a pin on the front too. Uh, keep it in there. But in the meantime, um, I have to figure out how this motor is going to mount. So that's our next step. So I've got it in this test setup with the Lemon RX receiver that I intend to use and the Yep electronic speed control that I intend to use. And so at this point, it's kind of time to go ahead and get this off of my little temporary setup and get it mounted into the fuse which is kind of a big moment for me. Now, the other thing about this is uh, I got a couple components that I need to work through and uh, I'm not sure the best order so I'm hoping that getting the motor in here will give me the flexibility to go ahead and shortly get the canopy finished. Um, <clears throat> But I think I do need to get this glued now that I sit and think about it out loud. This is the guide rod, or the guide, for the rod that's going to go between um, the wings. And so I guess before I get the motor mounted in there, which is going to allow me to work on the canopy, I need to do a dry fit of the wings and everything. So I think I'm going to do that next actually. And then we'll come back to the next steps here shortly. So, I guess I'll do that next. Just to try to protect my best chance of success. Now, obviously, the wings aren't built. One of my plans on the wings is to use this tape as well. So, that's got to happen at some point. And I'm not real excited about doing it, but the thing is this mono coat will weaken with enough um, cycles of the ailerons. And I don't want to add enough weight to actually put a, a proper hinge in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, look at the way these wings are gonna go. Of course I've got the got this beautiful cirrus in the way right now, so I'm gonna move it to a different spot, which it looks like a different spot might be a little hard to come by right this exact second. Looks like this is the place it's going to sit. Nah. We'll just make room on the floor. It's funny, planes take up a lot of room, you might have noticed, if you ever get into this. Okay, so I have these different choices for rods to hold the wings in. This is one. Got a little bit of bend in it, I'm not sure why. And this is the one that Ian built. He puts this duct tape stuff in the middle to help uh, with the positioning. And this is the this goes in the back of the wing. And then he built this one out of carbon fiber for me. And it's basically a two-piece deal where there's an outside carbon fiber and an inside carbon fiber. So these are what we're gonna we're gonna set in there. I hope everything fits. Okay, so the first things first. We're just gonna pick up the fuse and just look and see if this thing will even get in there. Which it's not looking like it's gonna fit right now. Looks like I'll have to open that hole up a little bit. Um, what I might do in the meantime, I might go ahead and grab the, the steel one because we're just trying to dry fit this stuff. We'll grab the steel ones and see if they fit. Okay, so the steel one fits, but the carbon fiber one doesn't. So I guess we're going with the steel one for the moment. And then I hope we don't have the same issue with the other one. Whoops. 
Oh yeah, that fits perfectly. Boy, that takes any play out of it that there might have been. It's very tight though. So I have a sneaky suspicion I might have to work with that a little bit. Because that's going to be extremely difficult to get in and out. Extremely difficult. Um, so what I'll do first, I'll probably just try to thin out this tape material just a, just a little bit. Now this stuff is just like between ducts, duct work. I think that's what he used on here. Um, and I guess that's how he gets a nice tight fit on there. I also like this stuff because you can you can wrap wrap the piece you're working with. Okay, that ought to made actually a little bit of a difference there. Took off the markings, of course. Okay, so let's try sign those together. Still pretty hard to get in there. I mean, it's definitely in there, but it's um, but it's tight, tight as all get out. I think the best approach would probably be to just go ahead and take a little more material down yet. That did help a lot the first first batch. The other thing is on this, I'm just going to clean up the end a little bit. This is um, carbon fiber, so it always clean up very good. Okay, so let's try again. See what's happening? It's wanting to, it's wanting to cut this off which is not cool. Um, it's not the end of the world either, but it's not what I had hoped. See, the trouble is it's really hard to mark carbon fiber because it's black. You can't see the mark real well. So I'm wondering if that was part of it, but it, it makes for a really good fit. You don't want this thing to have a lot of play on it that I can imagine. So I guess in that case, that's my next step is to go ahead and glue this in there and get this, uh, get this secured. I do want to take and just clean up the edge a little bit. So I did that on just like a real low speed. And that crap will be super itchy if I don't get it off of there. So I'm going to actually wash my hands real quick. I'm going to pause it and we'll do that. Okay, so wash my hands and then wiped off the uh, excess there. So now my goal is to get this in here in such a way that I can then glue it. One thing I might use the steel for in the meantime is just as a guide. Okay, so then I can take and push the carbon fiber through. Okay, so now it's through. Now I'm just going to take and push that flush on both sides. So I think what I'm going to do next real quick is I'll go ahead and just, uh, I need to get that thing epoxied in there. There's no getting around it. It has to be epoxied in. So what I would like to do is I'd like to get some mixture up and around it. So that's what we're going to do next. So i got a glove up. We're going to use 15 minute epoxy. Um, that's what... Ian highly recommended was using the 15 minute epoxy because it'll stay a little bit 
um, a little bit of flexibility, the most flexible of the group. I got 30, I got 5, and I got 15. I've had 5 forever, I use it all the time. Then I also have another product that I've used in the past. This is made by BSI, Bob Smith Industries. If you look on the back, they talk about... Where does it say? Mild cure, applied in temperatures above 6, okay. Smooth, non pore surface... It's more, it's, it's our most flexible epoxy. So, it's not any more expensive or less expensive than any of the other varieties. So, let's just grab a pair of gloves over here. I was reuse my gloves because I'm a super cheap ass. <clears throat> Excuse my French. But, uh, if you uh, spend a lot of money on this stuff, it adds up quick, you don't want to waste money on stuff like this. And so I just let the epoxy dry on them and then I reuse them if I need to. And then I have uh, a little bit of baby powder if I need to do something like that. Okay, so the best way I've found to mix epoxy, and there's a million different ways to do it of course, that all work just fine is to get a piece of cardboard, a clean piece of cardboard, and uh, preferably something that was in the trash, like literally in the trash, and then use a bamboo skewer, works real nice. And uh, trim the bamboo skewer back so you got a fresh point if you got a nasty edge. Get all your stuff ready to go, because you don't want to have to go back and be searching around for things while you're doing this. This is one of those steps you can't really get away with that. Okay, so this is all, see that's actually a really good mixing mixing board. And then I keep these, these are really, really nice. Like this. Big flat piece of plastic. I always keep stuff like this. Because it's the higher quality stuff. Okay, so two parts. If you're not used to using epoxy, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, you have a hardener and you have the epoxy. Okay, the hardener chemically reacts with the epoxy to make uh, to make the mixture. I'm going to use my crappy scissors for this just in case there's some up on the nozzle. Okay. Now this stuff won't dry out super fast um, but make no mistake it, it will eventually dry out and that's just part of it I got these scissors for Lexan the other day and I was trying to find a spot to put them hey look at that those are ferrite cores I used to put zip ties in there and they'd always fall through so I put them in a, a leave bottle to alleviate my frustration um, okay so we're not going to need a ton on this particular application of this product oh shoot I, I cut the nozzle but remember there should be a little retaining cap in here and so I usually just take and wipe off whatever excess is there and then I'll I'll put this down into my mixing area so it's not wasted but then I will actually uh, I usually try to keep this sort of weird item but just wipe them off real good because that stuff won't set up forever. It takes a long time to set up. Now you can put those back in if you know you're not going to be using the epoxy for a long time. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because... Oh, and the other thing is it smells pretty bad. I suppose you're probably supposed to use this in a well-ventilated area. I don't know. I have an exhaust vent that'll suck air out of the shop. It's like a big bathroom fan, basically, is what it is. A little bit higher airflow. Gosh, this thing doesn't want to come off with a darn. Not sure why it's being so difficult. Come on. Well, so much for hanging on to this one. Well, I got it out of there. Well, that kind of ticks me off. I hope it's not... Uh, 
It smells the same as what I'm used to smelling. I'm not sure I want to keep that. I could still plug the hole, so I guess I'll wipe it off and use it. It's just very thick. So we'll put these here out of the way. Okay, so first things first, you can use equal parts. And then there's other recipes if you really want to get down to it. But this is 15 minutes, it means you have 15 minutes to work it. If you're not real good at guesstimating how much you're putting out, you can see there's two puddles there. Gosh, that's hard to see in the video, isn't it? Okay. So there's two parts, they're about even. You can also try to gauge it by looking at those sight gauges, but that's kind of a joke in my experience. Very difficult to tell if you have the same amount. Make sure the tips are clean when you put it away. All right, so that activity has not started yet. So like if you look at a clock and you see what time it is, it says it's uh, 3.08. So if you're really concerned, set a timer. 12 minutes okay so that means in 12 minutes this is going to need to be done okay so then you take your tool and you mix it together now why 12 it's 15 minute epoxy well because it's not going to work very well the last few minutes it's going to start getting really sticky sticky in 15 minutes is a long time to work with epoxy in my experience I usually use 5 minute epoxy I have used 30 minute epoxy the last time I used 30 minute epoxy was on the Airbus A330 when I put the main wing on. And uh, the better you mix this stuff, um, the, the more effective the chemical reaction is in my experience. So I encourage you to mix well. Okay. So now that we got that mixed, we can go ahead and apply it to our work surface. That's the sort of stuff you should have done before you start mixing, but I just didn't. Uh, the other thing is have something to wipe up messes. And in this case, they use acid, they, they recommend acetone or alcohol, so I'll have that ready to go, but not necessarily right next to me because I don't want to spill it. Okay, so what I'm gluing is this black rod into the hole, okay? So I want to work fairly quick, but I need to be careful the way I do this. I don't want to just get so ahead of myself that I'd screw it all up. Okay, so you see how I rolled this up onto that stick? That's what I'm gonna do. I need to hold this with a clean hand, and then I'm actually gonna hold it down from where I'm working. I'm just gonna see if I can reach. I can reach, it's very thick right now, so I have to get more than I think I need so that it'll drip. Now work it, now work it. And you see I just dripped it on there. Dripped it on there pretty thick. Okay. Now I'm just going to let that work back and forth. Okay, now I'm going to put this back in the puddle. And then I want to take this Q-tip. And I can still get at it from the bottom here. So I'm going to just glue this. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see good. And the more surface area you get, the more contact, the more permanent this is going to be. And if that uh, fiber rips off in there, that'd actually be good from the Q-tip. But you still want to move, you don't want to remove the actual material. The epoxy is what's going to, what's going to be doing the holding together. Okay, so we'll lay that down. Now I want to do the same thing, but I want to do it on the other side. I'm sufficiently satisfied it's not going to drip all over itself. I think I might have bumped my camera on that last move. Sorry, guys. Okay, so just kind of pushing it where I think I want it. Spreading it up that shaft a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, now I'm gonna scrape up a little glob of it. And that's all it is, guys. You don't want to mix any more than you think you're gonna need. 
If you get too little, you'll be okay. If you get too much, it's kind of annoying because you're going to waste a bunch of it. You see, I'm just kind of spreading that up and down this rod a little bit. Now remember one other thing too is that this stuff is fairly heavy so you want to be careful about overdoing it. If you overdo it your plane will pick up a lot of unnecessary weight. Now this is a pretty critical member within the structure of the plane. Okay so now I'm just increasing the surface area here so that the epoxy will actually reach almost from one side to the other. Okay. See, I'm just kind of scraping the epoxy off of the side and then I'm spreading it. So that's going to make that carbon fiber rod extremely strong. It's already very strong as it is. I'd like to get it globbed in there on that wood. But I don't, I don't think I can bridge it. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's the way that's going to go. Now, it's tempting. Oh, look at that, guys. That's no good. That's where I want my wires to come through, so I don't want it to get out these holes here. So I'm just going to work it around. And then over here I'm going to just double check. It doesn't look like it's spilled in that way on the other side. So now the tricky part comes, how do you, where do you lay this so that the epoxy doesn't flow where you don't want the epoxy to flow, okay? So you just kind of have to use your best judgment. And the other thing is, my experience on these, when you're done, I guess for now, oh man, I touched that thing. Dang it. Got to just be careful. You don't want to get epoxy everywhere. It's make a huge mess. And that's exactly what epoxy will do if you're not careful. It's going to just make a huge mess. Um, sure, you can clean it up. But it, uh, it's a lot harder said than done. Okay, so this is the side. So I need one of my Q-tips. So we've got this other Q-tip here. Lay my mixing stick down. Just going to take and wipe off that little bump. And remember, this is not like CA. It's not going to thin out much. It's going to basically keep its shape. Okay, so I'm actually going to go up in there and wipe out some of that material. Okay. All right, guys, so it's out of there. And then that is, I don't think that's epoxy. I think it's something else. Okay, so that rod is glued in there. So now that we've had a chance to give a good close look at everything, now I'm going to go ahead and reevaluate it. looking from the angles that I have access to. I'm going to grab a flashlight. Yeah, we have really good penetration around it. We don't have a lot of spillage on the outside there, which is good. We definitely have ample room to get our wires in and then down into this cavity. I think we're going to be good there. All right, cool. So, next step. Patience. Oh, something I don't have a lot of. So now my next step is going to be to let these things set up and uh, we could do another part of the project just not 100% sure what that is. I don't know if I want to start putting servos in yet. Just because the servos are... We could do that surface. I really want to get the motor in, but... We could start disassembling this. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so next thing you can do is get rid of your gloves, lay those to the side. The epoxy will set up 
um, on the inside of those gloves if you would accidentally have gotten any anywhere you don't want it. This is clean. We can throw this away now. Anything that had epoxy on it, just throw it away. It's the easiest way. Just get this stuff out of your way. You're not going to want to be tripping over it. I do have these other epoxies out here too. 30 minute and a 30 minute uh, Red Baron Flexi Cure, which is a little different setup. So, we do need to get the wings tested for fit. But I just don't think we can really get away with that yet. We're going to put this over here out of the way so it can dry. Hang on to that for later. You can use the same paper. So now on the horizontal stabilizer and elevator here. Okay, so this is the elevator. This is the horizontal stabilizer. We're going to want to put some hinge tape on this. But I'm really torn on how I'm going to do this. Just for the simple fact that I got to clean this off first, and then I got to apply this stuff. This stuff's a super rip off. It's like five dollars for five yards, which I'd rather spend a hundred bucks for a thousand yards or some ridiculous amount like that, you know. But five bucks for five yards, in the grand scheme of things, on this, that's a lot of money for one little step. Okay, so let's get some alcohol. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm wondering if I should just pause this thing and we'll start a new video. We'll talk about the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Kind of jumping around, you might have noticed, guys. That's part of it with me. On this project, it's been really hard to keep focus on the next relevant step. Kind of weird, that stuff looks like it's not totally clear. Okay, so we're just wiping. I don't know what these blue things are. I think that's something Ian did. He must have found a piece of plastic that was about the right size and then plopped it in there, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of weird. He said he had started doing some work on these wings and stuff, so which is fine. Okay, so now that we have that taken care of, let's uh, let's dry it with a brand new paper towel. And we're going to end up with a tape piece that goes from right here to right here. And our overlap is going to favor into the, the plane half, if there is any. Okay, so that's 12 minute timer that just went off. So we can clear that off. So our epoxy should be getting really pretty well taken care of. Okay, so we're gonna grab a tail on this. Make sure you do this with nice and clean hands so you don't make a lot of fingerprints. This stuff is supposed to be really good. Everybody I've asked about making planes just talks about how awesome it is. Honestly, I think it looks crappy but I want my plane to, to fly awesome. So I'm going to suck it up. Boy, it's some stretchy stuff, that's for sure. And it's extremely sticky. Okay, so now this end is kind of crappy because that's where I had to peel it off the roll, but it laid down nice and flat. Okay, so that's going to reinforce that hinge. And that stuff is very supple. Boy, it really does work nice. It's visible though, you can definitely see it. It's um, almost like a bit of a matte finish. Curious how it cleans off. Looks good. All right, so now the key principal portion of this is to do the inside hinge 
as well. And that's very critical. So I've got that wiped down. Got it dried off. Now you got to make sure you have enough room to do this. The other thing is when you're done, you got to go around the other side and make sure you didn't compromise anything there, which it's still looking good. Okay, so we're about out of time, guys. Um, I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Come back for more.